honor him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and will show him my salvation. Father God, we come to you tonight hungry, Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that you're already here with us, God. Lord, I thank you, God, that you've prepared a table for us tonight, God. And we're hungry for you, Jesus. So I pray, God, that you begin to stir up your Holy Spirit on the inside of your saints, God, that they would come and that they would eat at your table tonight, God. Lord, that you would fill us up, God, to overflow, that we may overflow into this world that needs you, Jesus. So we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here, that you are here, and that you make this place your habitation. I thank you, Lord, and we recognize tonight that we are aware of you, Jesus. We are aware of your presence tonight, God. So I pray that we would come and that we would drink deeply of you tonight, Jesus. We magnify you and we glorify you and we honor you, God. And we want to say out loud that we are thankful for you, Jesus. We are grateful for your presence, God. Thank you, Lord, that we are that we are here hungry, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's in your sweet name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen.
voice we sing Oh how beautiful Oh how beautiful Oh how beautiful Come on every hand lifted in this place we sing And oh how beautiful
through all my days. Come on, every voice, we lift him up tonight. And hallelujah, our God, it's only you. And hallelujah, our God, yeah. tonight. You don't have to lean on your strength because God says it's all the strength you'll ever need. He's all the strength you'll ever need. He's in the waiting. He's in the way. Take courage, my heart. Stay steadfast, my soul. He's in the waiting. He's in the waiting. And hold on to your hope as your triumph unfolds. He's never failing. Oh, he's never failing. So take courage. So take courage, my heart. Stay steadfast, my soul. He's in the waiting. He's in the waiting. And hold on to your hope as your triumph unfold. He's never failing. Come on. He's never failing. Take courage, my heart. Stay steadfast, my soul. He's in the waiting. He's in the waiting. Hold on to your hope. As your triumph unfolds, he's never failing. He's never failing. Take courage, my heart. 
stay steadfast, my soul is in the way. He's in the way. Hold on, hold on, hold on to your hope. It's your triumph unfold. He's never failing.
on, what if we got just a little more desperate tonight? Jesus Christ. What if we got just a little more desperate for the king that gave everything? Miracles have what if we gave everything we fix to the one that gave everything for you? Jesus Christ. Church, he asked for one thing. He asked for one thing, and that's everything. It's simple because he gave everything. He gave everything. We fix our eyes because miracles happen. Let your faith build tonight. Let your faith rise tonight. Jesus Christ. Knowing that the one that gave everything can change everything about you. Miracles happen. Can change everything that you need. What if we got just a little more desperate? Miracles happen when we fix our eyes. Come on, let's worship Him tonight. Oh, Jesus Christ. God, we give you everything. We honor how you tonight with our praise. You, how we need you. With the song from our lips, God, we lift you up. When we fix our eyes on oh, Jesus Christ, we believe, we believe, we believe. Oh, miracles happen. right where you are, whatever's going on in your body, whatever's going on in your mind, whatever emptiness is going on in your life, addiction, He's here right now ready to minister to you and to take care of everything that's going on. In one moment, you can leave this place completely set free and changed. Mm -hmm. So Father, I, I just thank you that you are here in this building. Lord, sweep from side to side. Miracles. In fact, right now, whatever part of your body is ailing, whatever's hurting in your life, it may be depression, anxiety, even those that are you are watching by home or you're traveling on the road, you're in the hotel, whatever portion of your body, would you put your hand right there on that portion of your body and begin to pray? So Father, as they lay their hands on themselves, I speak, I speak your power and your healing and your deliverance and your strength. There's some of you, your marriage is in trouble. Would you reach over to that, that left hand and that fourth finger? Would you just take your right hand and lay it on that, that finger right there and ask the Lord to do a miracle in your marriage right now? Would you do that?
Guys, there's faith right now for healings. There's faith for deliverances. Some of you have been attached to drugs. You can't seem to overcome them. Pornography. Suicidal thoughts. Some of you have cut yourselves. Now, in the name of Jesus, break that, Father. Break that. That spirit off of them right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's freedom in this house. There's freedom in the house. There's free Jesus. your hands on that portion of your body right now. When I count to three, I'm just going to give the command of the Lord to be healed. I'm going to give that command to be healed. At that moment, you receive your healing from the Lord. Father, thank you that your Bible says, Lord, our Bible says that you were there and the power of the Lord was present to heal them all. So Lord, right now, unanimously Lord cross this incredible sanctuary and those at home Lord right now one two three be healed in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of the Lord the risen Savior now 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 Jesus now Lord In faith, do something that you couldn't do a moment ago. Do something you could not do a moment ago. If it's your right leg, lift it up. If it's your shoulder, lift that arm up. Whatever it is, just begin to do what you could not do a few moments ago. Things are popping right now. Things are popping right now. Things are popping in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. The presence of the Lord was there. The power to heal them all. Lord Jesus. My Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on, move that leg. Move that ankle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's great, isn't he? Come on, let's give him an incredible hand clap of praise and worship. Come on, church. Come on, lift it up. Come on, lift him up, 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 lift him up. My Lord, my Lord, it's great to see you tonight. Hug somebody's neck beside you. Shake their hand. Welcome them to Christ Fellowship Church. Do that right now. Welcome one another. so good to see you tonight you may be seated in the presence of the Lord welcome to Christ Fellowship Church we're so honored to have all of you all of our guests in the building tonight what an incredible good-looking group of people here this evening on the second literally the second Sunday of our summer vacation and it is a delight to have you here Are you glad to be in the house tonight I'm excited I am so pumped up uh, we are thrilled that we are continuing our revival that started February the 11th on a Sunday night when the Lord just literally wrecked us here at Christ Fellowship Church, just visited us in a powerful way. And uh, we're just so honored that, uh, that we, we get the opportunity just to meet on Sunday nights and worship Him as a church family. If this is your first time at our revival, not the first time here at Christ Fellowship, but the first time at our revival, would you lift your hands? I want to see. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Wow. 
Wow, he is in the building. Well, I want us to do something very special. I want to receive an offering tonight. We want to receive that offering to uh, benefit the revival that God is doing here. We obviously want to take care of the man of God tonight that will be bringing and delivering the Word of God, uh, Pastor Robbie Mathis from Freedom Tabernacle. We want to make sure he leaves here highly blessed and highly favored, knowing that he's been among friends, that he is with people that love him. And so I want us to stand to our feet, if you would, for the next few moments, and we're going to receive this offering. Ushers, would you come forward? Let's welcome our ushers as they come forward to receive our offering tonight. Come on, put your hands together. You know, this is an opportunity that we have to partner with what God's doing here at Christ Fellowship Church. And I, I just believe that whenever a man of God, woman of God comes and speaks to us, that they need to leave knowing that they are among people that they love and that love them. And we're going to bless him and his wife. And uh, because they've been a blessing to us, this church, and our entire community. And I thank God for their ministry, and I'll say more about that in a moment. But I want every person in this room tonight to be a giver. To be a giver. If you take care of a prophet, you shall receive a prophet's reward. I've known Pastor Robbie for a long time. He's going to come tonight delivering the Word of God. I'm just not sowing into what he has to say tonight. I am sowing in what the price that he paid 20 years ago and 22, 23 years ago. Because he's bringing an anointing to this house tonight that I know without a shadow of a doubt that he is the man for this moment. When God spoke to me to bring him to this house, I felt such a great peace come over me. And I was a little troubled because he and his wife were on vacation in Florida. I said, Lord, I, I know that he's supposed to be here on Sunday night. I just know him, I know her, but Lord, he's on vacation. And I didn't ask him to shorten his vacation. He was coming back anyway. And I just thought, I just, I just thank the Lord for that. But if I've ever known anything about a service, it's about tonight's service. And I know without any reservation that Pastor Robbie is supposed to be here this evening. Yeah, give God praise right there. And I've got those goosebumps on my arms. And I, I shared with you guys a few weeks ago that when I say something that heaven approves, they always manifest on my arms. I'll be in a counseling session, and it's 80 degrees in my office. And the Lord will say something or give me a thought, and I will say it, and it was like the presence of the Lord would sit down on me. I'm talking to Pastor Robbie yesterday. I'm at Home Depot buying some play sand. I'm outside. Y'all know how hot it was yesterday? Y'all know how hot it was yesterday? It was, it, it was mid-80s, Miss Mary. I'm out in there where the flowers are. I'm on the phone with Pastor Robbie. He was telling me about an event they were having at their church yesterday and how many of the women were touched and blessed by the Lord. And as he's talking and we're talking, Pastor, I'm out in the hot sun in short, short sleeve shirt, and I get those Holy Ghost bumps while we're having conversation by the play sand or wherever, wherever I was outside. It was absolutely remarkable. I just know if there's ever been a divine appointment, it's tonight. And I hope I built your faith. Now, I want to participate in blessing the man of God tonight. So can we do that at this moment? I'm going to pray, get your offering ready. Father, I thank you for a Holy Ghost quaking in this house tonight. Lord, as I read Acts 4 this week, I know that's what you're going to do today. When they were assembled together and they prayed and they cried out for you to send forth signs and wonders and miracles, that when they prayed, the place was shaken. All of heaven is bearing witness to this moment in time. Dawson County, 
for Scythe County, Lumpkin County, Hall County, will feel the quake from 139 Hightower Parkway tonight. Lord, I would not be surprised if that on that old meter that measures the Earth's movement, the seismograph that history records about 7.45 tonight, between 7.30 and 7.45 tonight, that there was a disturbance in the earth. For the earth groans for the revelation and the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. I've got those bumps on my arms right now. So Lord, we give tonight in faith and in anticipation. And all God's people said amen in agreement. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. As you are receiving the offering tonight, I want to go ahead and introduce our speaker. I've been introducing him for the, fast, the last five minutes. But I got to know Pastor Robbie Mathis about 22 and a half, 23 years ago. Pastor, I don't know if you remember that. I got to know him as a Baptist boy. And I had just experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost myself as a Baptist boy. And that's when we were a lot younger. I was a lot thinner and had more hair. You've not changed a bit. He's the same size as he was 23 years ago. He could eat a cow and walk into this building looking the same. Y'all know that. There was something about him that just startled me. His hunger, his thirst, and his passion for Jesus. And I've watched him over the years, the last two decades plus, pastor a church, the same church, Freedom Tabernacle. And he has been a man and a leader in this region, a man of the highest integrity, full of character, passion, who loves his wife, Jill, and their family, but more importantly, loves Jesus with all of his heart. He is a kingdom man. He's not a church man. He's a kingdom man. And that's why God smiles at you when you walk. You're a kingdom man. I've got those bumps again. I'm telling you, if you were able to, every time I speak and God favors it, he gives me those things. I'm, I'm speaking the truth. And it is my honor today to welcome him to Christ Fellowship. I would trust him with this church. I would trust him with my people. I would trust him with my family. He's that kind of man. And would you stand to your feet all across this building and give a Christ Fellowship welcome to the man of God tonight. The lead pastor at Freedom Tabernacle, one of the leading churches in this area, Pastor Robbie Mathis. Come on, Pastor. Take your liberty tonight. Obey the Holy Ghost. Come on, let's give Jesus a big praise tonight, can we? Come on, let's bless him. Let's bless him tonight. Isn't he good? Isn't he good? Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated tonight. Thank you so much for um, certainly that warm welcome and, and introduction. It just made me cry again. I told him I've just been walking around the last few months just crying. I'm in the presence of the Lord. It's just been awesome, and, and I've just, just been crying and laughing and just enjoying the presence of, the God, of God. It's just, just so sweet. And, um, you know, as, as, as he mentioned about wanting me to leave, knowing that I've got a bunch of friends here, I know I've got a bunch of friends tonight. I've got a bunch of friends. A lot of you that I know and, and close to, and a lot of you that I, that I don't know, and and I'm looking forward to getting to connect with you tonight and to be able to experience what God is, is doing and just enjoying His presence. As Pastor Todd and I were on the phone yesterday, and we were talking about as He was burning up outside at Home Depot, feeling those goosebumps. I was feeling those same goosebumps sitting in my air conditioning truck. But it wasn't air conditioner that made the Holy Ghost bumps. It was just, just God and just experiencing that. And just, uh, just such a great honor to be here tonight with, with you all to come and, and to just have this opportunity and privilege to, to uh, preach to, to you and, and to have this time to, to share. It's just incredible. 
I feel the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit right now. I feel Him. He's here. And I want to come and just partner with you and just be involved in what God is doing. As Pastor Todd shared, 20-something years ago, 22, 23 years ago, that's when I met Pastor Todd and, and Karen. Jill and I were, as your pastor, we were pastoring a Baptist church. we got gotten filled with the Holy Spirit in, in 1998. Mine was at 2.15 in the morning when I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and after that, I had heard about this Baptist pastor over in Gainesville that had gotten filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and I read his book. And it just really connected us and, and just because the similarities were just there. I thought, this guy can help me because all the people that, that I was accustomed to, to being around were m mainly Baptist pastors, and they didn't really know and understand about this. Or didn't, a lot of them didn't believe it. And so there was not a whole lot of people that I knew that I could talk to about this. So I was able to connect with Pastor Todd and, and, um, and just gleam from him. I read that book and I remember after we got filled with the Holy Spirit we were still pastoring at the Baptist church and we wanted to go and get involved in some of these services. Some of these Pentecostal charismatic spirit filled services. And so one night while we were still pastoring at the Baptist church my wife and I and some of the others from the church we wanted to sneak over to the church and just kind of vaguely hide in the back and just sit back there and just be in the service and just be obscure and just not let anybody else know that we were there. Well, when Pastor Todd got up to welcome everybody, like he does, and begins to call out people and point them out, and remember, I'm wanting to hide and just not be known or seen, Pastor Todd says, well, we're so glad to have Pastor Robbie Mathis with us tonight from Mount Tabor Baptist Church. Come on up, Pastor Robbie, and tell us what God is doing over at Mount Tabor. That's what Pastor Todd did. It scarred me. It scarred me. Oh, no. Not, I thought, well, if we didn't want anybody to know, they, they know now. Everybody knows we, we're there. So uh, anyway, as time went on, we passed it there a few more, a few more years, and then we resigned, and, and we started Freedom Tabernacle in, in um, December 17th of 2000. So this December, we'll be celebrating 18 years at uh, Freedom Tabernacle, and we're thankful for that. And we just appreciate our announcement this morning. We wanted to come and partner with you guys. I said, let's just take our congregation, go and be with theirs and be the kingdom and then just worship and honor God. So Freedom folks, thank you all for coming tonight on such short notice. Thank you all for coming and, and being, here, being here tonight. But I, I was able to, um, to really go and talk to Todd when I didn't have anybody else to talk to. I was able to go and, and find out and him answer some questions for me that I really needed to know in my life. And, and it's important to have people like that in, in your life. Pastor Karen and, and Pastor Todd, you'll never know what you mean to me and to Jill. And I want you to know that you have impacted thousands of people. M more than you know. More than you know. And I just want to tell you that we, we are so appreciative of what you have done, what you are doing, and what you are going to do. Can we honor these pastors tonight and just thank them? They're the ones making this happen for their obedience. Yeah. Praise God. But you know, just like it was that during those times in, in, in my life, there comes a point in all of our lives where you've got to get to the place where you're not going back anymore. You've got to get to the place where you're not going back. That you've crossed the line and there's no turning back. Why? Because you're not Lot's wife. You're the bride of Christ. And you've got to keep your eyes focused on what is ahead. 
and we're not looking back. So you got to get to a place to where that, that your eyes are focused upon Jesus. That it, all it is is that you want to continue moving forward, continue going on, pressing on, because yesterday's provisions and yesterday's touches of God are not going to be able to sustain you today. They were good for yesterday, but God wants to give you more so that you can increase. you got to keep on going. you got to keep on going. Amen? you got to keep on, keep on pressing on. That's what a hunger for Jesus will do. A hunger for Jesus will produce several things in your life, but one of the things that a hunger for Jesus will produce in your life is it will produce a thirst in you that cannot be quenched from yesterday's drink. There's got to be more. There's got to be more. And I want more, don't you? Come on, let's say it. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord, I believe you want more because you're here tonight. You're here tonight in this revival. We're going to experience more. Amen. We're going to experience more. So I come tonight and I feel like that I've just stepped in and I'm just riding on the crest of the wave of what God has been doing. That's what I feel like. I feel like I'm just riding on the crest of the wave of this move that God has just been pouring out. I feel like I've just, I've just stepped in. You're the ones that have, have plowed. You're the ones that have, have created this, this hunger. And you're the ones that have, have, are creating this way. And I feel like I've just stepped in and I'm just riding on the crest of the wave. And the Holy Spirit showed me this, this week, Todd, after that you and I talked. He showed me what was sustaining this wave. He showed me what this wave was being sustained by. Many will come and crash, but, but this one's being sustained. It's being held up. And the Holy Spirit showed me that this move of God, this wave that we are on, was being sustained by prayer and hunger. That's what He showed me this week. He said it's being sustained by prayer and by hunger. And as long as we keep those things up, as long as we keep praying... And as long as we keep the prayer lifted up and keep desiring and keeping that hunger before God will keep that wave and it will just cause it to, to, to continue. And we'll just be able to ride on it. Amen? We'll just keep riding on it. Now, this week, as you know, we were in, we were in Florida. And so we got to go out in the, uh, in the ocean and get out there. And I was just thinking about getting out there and riding th these waves. We like to go out there and play in the ocean now, I like to go out there, or should I say, I have to go out there and body surf because all my kids have the boogie boards and the rafts, and they get all the things. But we like to go out there and body surf and just ride the waves. And the Lord showed me some things about riding these waves, about His presence and about what's taking, taking place, and, and, it, and it is this. In order to be able to ride the waves effectively, you have to catch the wave at the right time. You have to catch it at the very right time for it to be able to be effective and to carry you where, it, where you want it to go and where it needs to carry. See, if you, if you get on it, if you start swimming and you, you get in front of the wave, if you go too early, you don't get pushed as far. You don't get pushed as far. But if you start... After the wave, many times you're too late. You're like, oh, I mean, it's already crashing. If you go behind the wave, if you don't go when it's cresting where you can ride it and you're behind it, all you end up doing is just watching the wave crash and you're back behind it and you miss it. I want to tell you tonight that opportunities have a shelf life. I said opportunities have a shelf life. They have a shelf life. Opportunities have a shelf life. They're not forever. They're not forever. So what we have to do is take advantage of the shelf life, of the opportune time that God is providing. And we can even start with tonight, this service, right now, right here. Don't say, well, I'll wait till the next service. No, it's right here. You can't miss. You, you, you'll be too late. You'll be watching the wave crash, and you've done missed it. It needs to happen tonight, what God wants to happen. You have to, you have to ride the wave when the wave is moving, what God is doing. You have to be able to, to move with it as it's taking place. Amen? So you have to, we have to learn how to ride the wave of what God is doing. You say, Pastor, really, what does that mean? Well, it's like this. When Jesus is serving wine, 
which is representative of the Holy Spirit, you drink. And when he is serving bread, we eat. And we have to learn how to be able to, to commune and ride the wave of what God is doing. When he's serving wine, we drink. When he is serving bread, we eat. And that is what I so appreciate and love about this congregation, this church. I know some of you graduated this morning from Caneo. Didn't you have your Bible class? This morning, some of you graduated from the Bible class that Sister Kara, Pastor Karen has been teaching. So you're getting the Word. You're getting the Word implemented in you. And so that is bread being served. And then you're allowed to come in this place and worship and they teach you how to flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, how to let the Spirit of God flow through you, I want to tell you uh, that a proper move of God and a way that God can move and continue to bless in every season, I'm not talking about just an event. I'm talking about every day of your life, every moment. It's when you can take the Word of God and you can apply it in your life and just allow the Holy Spirit to flow through you, taking the Word taking the knowledge that you have and letting it flow with the Holy Spirit, God will cause you to throw, uh, to flourish and be used uh, to give God glory. Uh, so come on, let's give him praise right now and thank him uh, for the word and thank him for the Spirit of God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. So you just got to ride the wave. Ride the wave of what God is doing. But then I also noticed something else. As we stood there with my family, when I looked towards the, to, the, to the sand and the seashore, we could watch the waves as they would go. But when I would turn around, and I'm standing here trying to catch these waves to ride that are good, I noticed something. If I really wanted to catch the good waves to ride, I had to go out deeper. <laughs> I, I had to go out. I had to go out deeper. I looked out. Now, now the teenage boys are a little bit more dangerous. They're, they're, dare, they're, they're daring. So I looked out there, and my oldest son, and, and both of my sons were out there way out in, in the deep. And I was saying, man, they're getting out there too far. And I looked one time, and my son was on, was on the boogie board, and he was on top of one of those big old waves. And all you could see was him come up, and he had a big old smile on his face. And he was just like, and it was lifted him up way up high. And I just thought, if we want to catch the good waves, we got to go out deeper. If you want to experience the fullness of, of God, you're going to have to go out deeper with Him. I said, you're going to have to go out deeper with Him. You have to get out deep where that it's overflowing. We all talk about overflow in our life. How many of you want overflow in your life? You want God to overflow in your life? Overflow. Let's say it. I want overflow. Overflow, Lord. So if we want overflow, you got to understand this principle. You'll never have overflow until your heart overflows with God. And so you've got to go out deep. You've got to go out deep. And you've got to be able to ride the waves of what God is doing. And so as we go out deep, the Lord sent me a, tonight with a word. He sent a word to us all tonight. And it was this right here. I hear the sound. That's it. I hear the sound. <laughs> I say I hear the sound. I hear the sound. Now I want you to look with me tonight in 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. Look at verse 41. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41 says, Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance 
of rain. The sound of abundance of rain. Now you need to understand the context of what's taking place. This was Elijah, the prophet, the man of God. Three years prior to this right here, Elijah told Ahab, who happened to be Jezebel's husband, that there would be no dew nor rain until he declared it and until he released it. I hear the Holy Spirit saying tonight that you need to tell Jezebel and all of her relatives that you'll be the one uh, doing the declaring and you will be the one uh, making the decisions according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And he said, there's not going to be any dew and there's not going to be any rain until I declare it. Elijah had a showdown with 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah. God answered by fire and he displayed that he was the only true and living God. And Elijah went and executed all of the prophets. Now I want to tell you tonight. You may be feeling like you're the only one and you're standing against a whole uh, a big army. You, you're up against a, a, an impossible situation is what I heard. An impossible situation. And you just feel like that you're up against it. Like Elijah, you feel like. Now the truth is you're not alone because God is with you. We got a covenant with God. And he said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. We know that God is always there. And Elijah had that covenant. He knew that God was with him. But you may be facing an impossible situation tonight. And you've got to hear the sound of victory. And God's going to let you hear that sound of victory tonight. He's going to let you hear that sound of victory tonight. Amen. He's going to let you hear it. He's going to let you hear it. So I want you to pay attention to what happened. 1 Kings 18, 41, and this is the verse. And Elijah said to Ahab, he said, go up, eat, and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. Elijah heard the sound. Before any proof of the manifestation of it. I said he heard the sound before any manifestation was revealed to him. We've got to get to the place to where we're hearing the heavenly sound and in faith knowing that it's going to take place because heaven has revealed it, because we understand it. Amen? Sound precedes the manifestation. Biblical sounds are never intended to follow the manifestations, but they are to announce the arrival of the power or the manifestations. That's what biblical sounds do. Everything follows the direction of its sound. Any move will begin with the sound. The sound will determine and reveal the destiny. It's like tornadoes. You hear them. Trains, you hear the sound, the, the, the reverberation, the, the, the track. You know what direction it's coming. Yesterday we were sitting out in my mom and dad's porch uh, eating some good old homemade ice cream. I mean, it was just. Uh, and we were sitting there, and we began to hear some rumbling of thunder. It was off in a distance. We knew which direction it was coming. And the closer that it got, the louder the thunder got. We knew that it was approaching. We knew that it was coming. We knew that it was there. And before, as the thunder got closer, then we began to hear the wind beginning to blow, coming from the same direction that the sound was coming from. And then we began to hear the rain off in the distance before that it got to us. So that sound precedes uh, the, uh, the, the, the destination. It, it goes before it. And that's the same thing that it does in the Spirit. Do you remember in Acts chapter 2? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came... A sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. 
And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all, everybody say all, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. I wonder tonight, church, does anybody hear the sound? Do you hear the sound of good things taking place? I want to tell you tonight, I hear the sound. I heard the sound when I was in my house uh, before I ever got up. I could hear the sound uh, taking place in this sanctuary tonight. I could hear the sound of rejoicing. I could hear the sound of praying. I could hear the sound of celebration. Come on, let's give him praise tonight. Let's hear the sound. Oh, we hear the sound. I'm thinking about the anticipation and the expectation of the Israelites as they listened to the ringing and clanging of the bells on the high priest when he stepped into the Holy of Holies on the Day of, of Atonement. And they knew that as long as they heard those bells, uh, that there was life and the sacrifice was, was being made. And they knew that there was life in there because uh, if the priest, the high priest had went in there unclean and, and he was not clean, he would die in the presence of God. So they had to tie a rope to him and pull him out if he died. Uh, but I want to tell you, as long as they heard the bells ringing, as long as they heard that sound, uh, they knew they knew there was life there. And they knew that in the presence of God, uh, there was life there. Can I tell you, church, tonight, that as priests of God, we need to make a sound. I said as priests of God, we need to make a sound. Why? Why do we need to make a sound? Because through the sounds that we make in conjunction with the Holy Spirit, we are giving heaven legal jurisdiction to invade earth by what we release. By what we release. We got to give heaven legal jurisdiction to be able to invade earth. What sound are you talking about? I'm talking about hearing the heavenly sound. Here's an example. I need to hear, and I have heard, for God to declare that I am his son. You need to hear that God has declared you his child, his daughter, his son. Because when you hear that sound, and that truth is revealed to you in your life, then you are able to declare Father, I thank you that I'm your son. Lord, I declare it out that I'm your, I am your child, that I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. I, I, I'm blessed in the storehouse. I'm blessed in the field. That, that, that's, that's what we have to declare. But you have to hear the sound. You have to know. You have to know what God has declared about you. Amen? You have to hear the sound because here's the reality. Heaven responds to earth. I said heaven responds to earth. We think the earth responds to heaven. Heaven responds to earth. What are you talking about, Pastor? If any two agree on earth, as touching anything they ask, it shall be done for them, for my Father which is in heaven. Heaven is waiting on some, some agreement on the earth to give them a legal jurisdiction to release and invade heaven and the earth. Amen? Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So we have to do the agreeing. Amen? We have to release the sound. Jehoshaphat was in a battle one time, and what did he do? He released the praisers out front. 
He said, you don't have to do anything. Just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. It's what the message was to Jehoshaphat. And so when they got up and they sent the praisers out, when the message was going and the praising was happening, it confused and confounded the enemy, and they had a great victory. Can I tell you that the sounds of praise, the sounds of worship, the sounds of adoration, the sounds of thankfulness to God, when we begin to thank God and to declare his goodness in life, it confounds and confuses the enemy, especially when life has hit you hard and you're not supposed to be praising God, but in your spirit you know that everything is all right and you release the sound of heaven. The Israelites had to walk around Jericho seven days, and on the seventh day, seven times. And when the shofar was blown, and they shouted, the walls fell down. Sound proceeded. The manifestation and the power of God was released. Are you hearing me? We have to release the sound. You have to release the sound. We have to release the sound in spite of our circumstances. Listen, life does not determine our happiness. Our life and happiness is dictated by the giver of life, not life circumstances. And so we have to take what we hear in the Spirit and release out that sound that heaven releases in our spirit and what heaven releases in our heart. Amen? What did Elijah do? He heard the sound. Look at verse 42. Let's read the rest. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground. He put his face between his knees. I want to tell you, Elijah went, and he positioned himself for the manifestation. (laughs) I said he positioned himself for the manifestation. Oh, it's one thing. It's one thing to hear the sound. But it's something else when you go to position yourself, uh, to get yourself ready, position yourself, uh, to be able to receive uh, the manifestation of what you've heard. And so Elijah heard the sound of abundance of rain, and he went up to the top of Mount Carmel. Carmel means fruitful ground. You need to get to a place that's fruitful. And he got down on the ground, and he began to pray. And then he began to send his servant out there. The Bible said he said to his servant, go up now. Look toward the sea. He went up and he looked and he said, there's nothing. Now this is usually where we get disappointed and defeated right here. Because you've heard a sound, you know the promise of God, and you go and when it doesn't happen, and you don't see any evidence of the answer coming into your life, you give up. And seven times, so he, he went up and said, there's nothing. And he, seven times he said, go again. He come back, nothing. Go again. There's nothing. Go again. There's nothing. Go again. There's nothing. And on the seventh time, go again. And on the seventh time, he come back and he said, there's a cloud. <laughs> there's a cloud. There's a cloud. Yeah. It might be just a little cloud showing up, but the answer is there because you already heard it in the sound. You've already heard the sound. There's a cloud as small as a man's hand rising, rising out of the sea. And he said, get up, Ahab. Go up and say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he girded up his loins, and he ran ahead of Ahab to the instance of Jezreel. The reason that Elijah could keep anticipating the rain, even when his servant saw nothing was because he already heard the sound. He already heard it. He already heard the sound. So it was just a matter of it happening. He already heard the sound. Go look. He came, servant, come back, nothing. I already heard the sound. Go again. Nothing. I've already heard the sound. Go again. When you don't see any indication 
that God is moving on your behalf, you got to just keep going. Because you've heard the sound of heaven and it being released in your life. Amen. I hear the sound. Church, do you hear the sound? Everybody say, I hear the sound. Come on, I hear the sound. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, don't you, don't you hear the sound? I hear the sound. I hear the sound of salvations occurring. I hear the sound of joy. I hear the sound of peace. I hear the sound of happiness. I hear the sound of life. I hear the sound of healings. Didn't you hear them was popping when he began to pray earlier? Uh, when he was talking about move, I could hear it. I could hear in the spirit realm of uh, some things popping. I could hear the sound of it taking place. Uh, do you hear the sound uh, of breakthroughs? I hear the sound of deliverances occurring. I hear the sound of freedom tonight. I hear the sound of restoration tonight. I hear the sound of unity. And I want to tell you tonight uh, what the enemy and our adversary uh, has done. Uh, try to divide and separate and destroy uh, the very living organism uh, that Jesus said he was going to build and the gates of hell would not prevail against it is the very thing that's being bringing us together and there is unity and freedom. Let's give him praise tonight. We got to hear the sound. We got to hear the sound. Why do we need to hear the sound? Because what sounds you hear is what you're going to release. The sound that you hear is the sound that you're going to release. Can I tell you tonight that your shadow will always release what's overshadowing you. If you are overshadowed with depression and discouragement, you will release discouragement and depression. But if you are overshadowed by the love of God, you will release the love of God. If you are overshadowed by peace, you will release peace. You will hear it. You'll release it. we got to hear what heaven says so that we can release it. Because when we agree, why is it so important to hear the sound? Because what you hear is what you release. What you release is either going to give legal jurisdiction for heaven to be invaded in your life or for darkness to be released and invaded in your life. It has to do with what you release out. So we have to hear what heaven declares about the situation. Amen? That's, that's what we hear. That's what we hear. That's what we hear. Come on up, Joe. Two weeks ago, two Sundays ago, we were at our church. Prophet Tim Hines was there ministering to us. He preached on dreams preached on dreams. At the end of the service, he said, I want to lay hands on everybody's dream. Whatever you're dreaming for, whatever you're believing God for, I want to lay hands and agree with you of what your dream is. We run to the front. Now we, I mean, a lot of people came up for prayer. Jill and I were standing in our church at the altar about, about right here. We were holding hands. We were probably one of the first two that got, that got prayer for him to lay hands on our dream. My dream and my heart Pastor, was that our whole church would experience revival. That everybody there would experience a move of God. That, ev that everybody would. That was my dream. I said, God, that is my heart. That is my heart, Tim. That is my heart. I, I need, God, I want everybody in this place to experience and encounter your presence. I want everybody, God, everybody to experience what you're, what you're doing, God. I want everybody, God, I want it to expand. I want it to increase. I want everybody to experience, Lord, this moving of your presence. And so he laid hands on us in our dreams, and we just lay it in the, in the floor, just the Holy Spirit ministering to us. We got up, and I just began to sit down on the altar there I was just sitting back and just watching Tim just minister to people and the words that he was releasing 
And all of a sudden, during part of the service, I saw my 12-year-old daughter come in the foyer of the church. She was down in the, in the middle school ministry with Pastor Todd Christopher, our, our youth pastor there, having a Holy Ghost outpouring on the youth at the same time that it was occurring. My little 12-year-old girl daughter came down. and She just sat right here between my legs. She looked up at me, and we would, she turned around and looked up to me. She said, Dad, I just got baptized in the Holy Spirit. My 12-year-old daughter got baptized in the Holy Spirit down there in the U. And I said, God, you answered my prayer, and you started with my family. You baptized my little girl in the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you tonight, it's not just for the seasoned of the old. Of This Holy Spirit is available to all that hunger and all who thirst. All you got to do is ask Him. In Jesus' name, ask Him. Do you hear the sound? Do you hear the sound tonight? Woo! Come on, do you hear the sound? Pastor Todd told me about, Pastor Todd told me about ministering to him. See, my little daughter just had tears rolling down her face. He asked him, anybody wanted to experience more? To get filled with the Holy Spirit, she raised her hand. Tears just flowing down her face. Pastor Todd said, all you got to do is just ask him. She said, I said, all you got to do is just tell him you want more. She said, Lord, I want, and just went out. Before she ever got more out, all you got to do is, all you got to do is ask him. I want to tell you, God has so much, so much more. This past week, we went out deep sea fishing. That's what we went down to Florida for us to go fishing. The Lord's been teaching Jill and I about faith, about the importance of sowing seeds, about the importance of blessing the kingdom, and about believing God for great things. The Lord put on our heart to sow into a ministry we'd never given to. Put it on our heart. I was in my office. I wrote that check out. And I wrote down on the memo, fishing trip. I wrote it on there. So I bet when that ministry got that check and they were going fishing trip, what in the world? But I named it. And I laid my hands on it. And I blessed it. And I said, Father, I am giving you. I'm sowing into this ministry. And I'm sowing this seed in faith because we want to catch some fish to bring back home so we can eat it. Because God supplies everything. Amen. So we prayed. Senate, Jill and I prayed the prayer of agreement. If any two of you agree on earth as touching anything they ask, it shall be done for them for my Father which is in heaven. We prayed the prayer of agreement, and we received what things soever you desire. When you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. When we prayed the prayer of agreement, we received those fish. All I had to do was go out there and receive them, get them in the boat. So we did. They were as good as in that boat, Pastor. We went out there, brought back 72 pounds of fish. Besides the ones we threw back, because we'd already caught our limit on some of them, because some of them were out of season. And this is what the Lord did so special. Now the freedom folks come back to hear this. I left, I left them with a cliffhanger because I said there's more of the story. And some of them said that's the only reason they came back tonight to hear the rest of this story. We fished almost. Our time was about up. The captain said, you boys pull up. We got one more stop to make. We want to go there so we'll have enough time. Pulled up. As we were riding and on our way back to that next reef marker, I was just sitting down thanking the Father. Lord, I thank you for the catch of fish we have received. God, you are so good. You've honored. You've honored it. And Lord, I thank you for increasing my pay. Thank you that we're going to have all those fish to take back home. Thank you, God, you have blessed us. I give you thanks, Father. And I heard the Holy Spirit whisper to me. 
He said, you're not finished. When we got to that last stop, it was as fast as we could pull them up. My dad caught the biggest one, his biggest one. My boys were pulling up two fish at a time. Catching them. It was exceeding abundantly more than what we could ask or think. I was already appreciative and thankful for what God had done. But Father said, you're not finished. And when I was sitting out by the pool, after Pastor Todd called me about coming tonight, I was sitting out there, and God reminded me of what He spoke to me. And I got out there, and I sit by the pool, and I was just shaking, and I was just I was crying. I was shaking. And God said, you go and tell them, just like I told you about that fish, you're not finished. You're not, you're not finished. You're not finished. Oh, you've, you've had some good times. But the Lord says you're not finished. You're not finished. You're not finished. Because God's taken us into a place where we're going to live this. We're going to live it. It's all the time. We're not finished. Amen? We're not finished. I say we're not finished. I say we're not finished. Come on, say we're not finished. We're not finished. There's more to come. Yeah! Aren't you thankful for what God has got? More to come. More to come. More to come. And this is what I want to do. I want to just release out heaven, Pastor, if that's okay. I want to just re release out heaven what I've heard, what, what I'm hearing. And I want to start with your leaders right here. Pastor Todd, you and Karen, come here. I want to release it. Some of you other leaders, get around them and stand here because I want to, I want to release what I hear heaven, heaven declare it tonight because it starts with you too. I want to just release this. I hear the sound. I heard the Holy Spirit saying that He is releasing an Isaac anointing over your lives. And He took me to Genesis chapter 26 for you. It was a time where I, Isaac went to the place that God had told him that he needed to go to. And there was an inheritance that came through a covenant that Isaac had. And he had to work diligently to preserve the inheritance that God had for him. So he began digging up those wells. He had to redig some wells to preserve the inheritance of what God had for him. And I hear the Lord saying that you too have an inheritance. You have an inheritance. You have worked faithfully and diligently to preserve that inheritance. That's what I hear the Lord saying. I heard the Lord clearly say, You have redug some wells. You have redug some wells. And in redigging those wells, the Lord said, you have found pure, clear water. And when you found that clear, pure water, when you found it, you obeyed Him. And because of your obedience, He has released that living water, fountain of living water, to flow over all those that you are leading. And in this 22nd verse, the Bible said, and he dug another well, and he called it Rehoboth. He said, for now, the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. I hear the Lord saying, because you have honored me, I will honor you. I will cause you like Isaac uh, to flourish and prosper in all that you do. I declare this night the Exodus of the Deuteronomy 24 19 blessing over you that God shall bless all the works of your hands. So in Jesus' name, let them hear the sound. Let them hear the sound. Let it be a new sound. 
a ring in it. Come on, let's give him praise. Keep digging those wells. 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 Yeah. Keep digging those wells. So came it up. I hear the sound. I hear the sound. I saw. I saw waterfalls just flowing over your property. I saw it flowing over your properties. Now hear the sound. The Lord said, because you have sustained my people, I will sustain you, says the Lord. You shall receive the prophet's reward. And just like the Shunammites, the Shunammite, when there's things that appear dead in your life, God says, I'll resurrect them back to life. Lord, let them hear the sound. Lord, let them hear the sound. 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 Let them hear that. I need some people to walk with me. Where's you? Some ushers. You got some ushers right here. Hey, hey. The Lord is causing you to hear the sound of rejoicing. He's, a, he's letting you hear of the sound of of rejoicing tonight. And I saw your heart. This is what I saw. The Lord has got your heart in the palm of his hand. It's like the potter does with clay. He's got it. And he's just softly massaging it. Just very gently, just massaging your heart. And in the process, in the process, in the process. <laughs> I hear the Lord saying that He's taking you to a deep place of intercession. There is a prayer, there is prayer that God has taken you that is going to be deeper than you have ever known, and it's going to come through the sounds that you've heard in Jesus' name. Hear the sound, hear the sound, hear the sound. There He is. Hear the sound, hear the sound, hear the sound. Hear the sound of heaven. Hear the sound of heaven. Hear the sound. Come here, man. I hear the Lord. The Lord is saying he's opening up of the sound of your mouth. I hear the Lord saying he's opening up the sound of your mouth. And just like just like that he told me on that fishing trip and said, you're not finished. I hear the Lord saying, you're not finished. You're not finished. God's opening up a sound of your voice that's going to enlarge. He's enlarging your territories. And you think, my sister, you're not equipped and you're not qualified. Oh, but I hear the Lord saying, oh, yes, you are. And you're going to hear that sound uh, tonight. You're going to hear the sound in Jesus' name. Hear that sound. Hear that sound. Hear that sound. Hear the sound of heaven. Hear the sound of heaven. Do you hear the sound? Do you hear the sound? Ryan Roberts, is Ryan in the hospital? Is that your intern pastor? Okay. He's right, Ryan watching right now. Ryan's watching right now. Is Ryan watching? Ryan, you're watching right now. Ryan, I saw on Facebook that you were having trouble breathing. That you were having some stuff going on. Someone released a word this morning in our congregation. Now, a snake would wrap itself around you and try to strangle you and try to take the air out of you. But you know how to counter that? As you begin twisting and you begin twirling. So Ryan, right now, I want you to start twisting. I want you to start twirling. I want you to start twisting and twirling because that thing that's trying to take the life out of you, are you just going to untwist it? You're just going to untwist it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I take authority over every anxiety 
every worry and concern in Jesus' name. I bind and I break the power off of your life. And in Jesus' name, I speak to your lungs to expand. I speak to your bronchial tubes to expand. In Jesus' name, Orion, be healed. In Jesus' name, receive the very breath of God. Yeah, let's give him praise. Be healed, Ryan, in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, I know that Christ Fellowship's been having some baptizings. They've been having some baptizings, and most of them have been spontaneous baptisms. I hear the sound. I hear the sound of that water splashing and out. I, I hear the sound of baptisms occurring and out, Tim. I, I, I hear the sound of that occurring. There's some of you that need to get baptized tonight. There's some of you that need to get baptized. And you say, well, I didn't bring any clothes. I'm not prepared to get baptized. Hey, don't worry about that. They got scrubs. They got stuff back here prepared. You're going to get ready. You're going to get ready, and you're going to get baptized because this is what the Lord told me. This is, what the, this is what I heard the Lord say. When Jesus went and got baptized in the Jordan, when John baptized Jesus, when he came up out of the water, Jesus heard a sound. What was that sound? This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And I heard the Holy Spirit saying that some of you are struggling with your identity in Christ. You're struggling with who you are. Are you pleasing to Him or you're not pleasing to Him? God wants to solidify some of that tonight and set you free. You're going to hear the sound of affirmation coming from the Heavenly Father tonight if you will step up and go get in that pool and get baptized. Where do they need to go? Just right here? Just come on up. Is there a way back? They're going to take you back there. and They're going to take you back there. And, and, and for you to get baptized... I believe there's some folks from freedom uh, tonight that need to jump in there in that water. You say, well, I've already been baptized. Some of these, listen, most of these, a lot of these Christ Fellowship folks uh, had already been saved. They're saved and baptized. Uh, but listen, it's a new season. It's a new life. You've got to take some of that things in your life and say, I'm burying them. I'm putting them to death. It's no longer a part of my life. I'm coming up new. I want to hear a new sound. I want to hear a sound from heaven tonight. I want to hear a sound from heaven tonight. I want to hear that new sound. So if you need to get baptized, if you need to get baptized, I encourage you. Make your way on up to there. Just make your way on up. This is a spontaneous baptism. Just say, I'm all in. 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 I'm burying things. And I'm like, come on, brother. It's time in here. Come on, brother. Come on and go get in that pool. Come on. There's others that need to get baptized. They need to just surrender their lives. They just need to soak it and put it under. Get on up there, girl. It's all or nothing. Come on. As we're going. We're getting baptized tonight. Come on, brother. We're, we're going to get baptized tonight. Come on. We're going to get baptized tonight. Yes. We all in. We all in. We all in tonight. Yeah, sister. Come on. Come on right there. It's our worship leader right there getting baptized. That's our worship leader. One of our, one of our ushers right here getting baptized. Because uh, they're saying they're all in. That's what we're going to do. They're going to go back there and get ready to get baptized. You've been waiting your turn. You've been waiting. If you're ready to hear a new sound, if you're ready to hear a new sound, come on. Come to the altar. We're going to pray. Everybody, we're going to pray. We're all going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to lay hands on you, and we're going to believe how to hear a new sound tonight. We're going to let heaven sound be heard uh, tonight. So, Joe, y'all go ahead. Kick it up. Let's see. Wait, come on.
rise up, oh heart, believe, let faith rise up in me, oh we sing, let faith rise up, oh heart, believe, let faith rise up in me, we believe, oh let faith rise up. Oh heart, believe, let faith rise up in me. Let faith rise up, oh heart, believe, let faith rise up in me. Oh, let faith rise up.
praise him. Praise him. Praise him in this house. Praise him in this house. Praise him in this house. Here's what, here's what we're, I want you to look what's happening to my arm, do you see, come here, let me lay my hand, Father in the name of Jesus, complete, yes Lord, alright listen to me, two things, gave me a vision two nights ago Thursday night and Friday night I came to the sanctuary late at night to make a deposit for a service tonight as many of you have all week long have been here the Lord said that there is like a fire NATO that will be in that in that baptistry they're telling me that they're having a difficult time even getting them down the steps. The presence of the Lord is so strong. I've never seen anything like this. And, and Pastor Robbie, you and I have been in Pentecost just over two decades, haven't we? I mean, 1996, 97. We've been, I've never seen what I am seeing right now with this happening. I asked Pastor Robbie if he could come back next Sunday night and preach for us again. Can you? And, and he he he's got to check with Miss Jill or whatever. But if everything's good, I just ask him to come back and minister to us next Sunday night. Come on, give God praise in this house. Yes. Now, I know it's Father's Day. I need to pray for y'all. Come here, right quickly, right here. Pastor Robbie, I want you to lay hands on these on this couple. Come on over here. See, all of you all over here. I'm going to ask the Holy Ghost to touch you. Now, Pastor Robbie, when I count to three, I want you to lay your hands on both of their foreheads. And I want you to hear what I'm about to say. God is about to do something in the two of you. He's going to take you deeper in Him. Your tongue is going to be used as a mouthpiece to give glory to Him, but also to teach others. So, Father, in the name of Jesus... I thank you that right now your Holy Ghost is all over this building. Fire. Now, touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. Come on, give God praise. Come on, give God praise. If you need to be baptized tonight, continue to make your way up here. Pastor, uh, Pastor, um, Pastor Marty. is that some left and we'll miss what's about to happen. Timing is everything. My God, that fire NATO has already been brewing back here for about 30 minutes. Never felt it this strong in all the weeks. Sweetheart, tell everyone your name. Keely. Keely, why are you in these waters tonight? What's God doing in your life? He's been pounding on my heart about, about just, just going deeper. And I went deeper and I got filled with the Holy Spirit and I started speaking in tongues. And then I realized that I didn't get baptized for the right reasons. And he, he told me, just go. And I went and I don't want to say no. I said no before and I don't want to say no. I want to say yes. I just want to 
want to say yes to all that he's got. All that he's got. So not all you've got for her, Lord. We baptize our sister in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Chris Lively. Chris, why are you in the baptismal pool tonight? I'm trading in my old flame for a new fire. <laughs> old flame for a new fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Thank you, Jesus. All glory and blessing. Praise unto you, Father, for this old flame, for a new fire, Father. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in this spirit, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in this place, Father God. We glorify and we honor you in this place, God, for what you're going to do. We trade it in our old wine for new fire. Old skin for new fire. Old skin for new fire, God. We thank you, God. We bless you, Lord. We praise you, God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Father, we baptize her now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. everyone your name? My name is William Baker. Really? Yes. William, why are you in this water tonight? Because I want to be, um, I want to just live for the Lord. I want to, I don't need a fresh start. And I just, just want to be whatever he needs me to be. I just want to live for him uh, and be just experience his love and his awesomeness. Yeah, I hear you say fresh start. I hear him say resurrection. It's resurrection day for you. Old habits are dying tonight. Old addictions are dying tonight. Old strongholds, old chains, they're coming off tonight. In the name of Jesus, we baptize you now, brother. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost.
Where's mama? Where's mama? Where's Taylor? Listen to me. You listen to me. Take courage. Take courage, my heart. They weren't singing. They were prophesying to you. Take courage, my heart. Stay steadfast, my soul. Because he's in the waiting. He's in the waiting. Logan, come here. Come here. I want every eye to see what's about to happen. Watch. Watch what only the Father can do. My Lord Jesus. As soon as I could get here, that's all I wanted to do. That's all I wanted to do is get here. All I could do was hear about it from everybody that I love. And the first chance I could get here to get this water, I need this new wine. I need this. My family needs this. My family needs me. Yeah, yeah tonight's your tombstone night. You, you need to visit your own gravesite tonight. It's time you go to your own gravesite. You're going to your own gravesite. You're looking at your own tombstone. Your own tombstone tonight. Matthew, we baptize you now into death. Only to be raised to life when you come up out of it. This water, he's going to fill you to overflowing. Never the same. We baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Somebody ought to run. My God. I told Tom before we baptize anybody, do you know at midnight tonight, at midnight tonight, you will never get this night back. Once it's done, it's over. It's gone. Tomorrow, don't wake up having a regret. Go all in. Don't waste another moment. Woo! Right, sweetheart, tell everyone your name. My name is Nadine Lindsay Harshaw. Tell them one more time. There was music. My name is Nadine Lindsay Harshaw. And I just want to say, I bought an, a picture several years back in 2007 when I first entered Freedom Tabernacle. And it was a picture of a man in 1 Corinthians where he was just taking off his old self and God was making it new. <laughs> this morning, I was like, God, I want to be deeper with you. <laughs> and as I went upstairs to go wake my daughter, he stopped me in my track. He said, today, <laughs> he's going to take off the old me and fill me yes. with yes. him. Yes. Yes. Never felt so worthy in my life than in that moment. All I want to do is 
just worship him. Father, thank you for obedience like this. Woo! I've searched the world over and found my beloved. My banner over you, my daughter, is love. Hallelujah. We baptize you, our sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. you right now if the, if the Holy Spirit's pulling on your heart if he's tugging on your heart right now that you need to come up here and get baptized I'm telling you right now Pastor Robbie appreciate it tonight that your opportunity has a shelf life don't miss your opportunity right now the waves about to crest okay there's power that's moving right here the Holy Spirit is in this place tonight do not miss your opportunity the wave is about to crest right now I want to encourage you if he's pulling on your heart go for it don't hold back give him everything you've got Are you in the baptismal waters tonight? Oh, God said go. I'm here. She's here too. She's here. She's here. She's here. She's here. She's here. baptize you now, sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This is the associate pastor from Freedom Tabernacle, good friend, Alan Jones. Guys, I've been around this thing a pretty good while. I ain't never seen nothing like this. We're in a season of God, guys, like I've never seen before. Never witnessed when my little boy goes to school this year and he, the teacher asked him, said, what do you want to write about, son? He said, I want to write about my papa. He's my hero. He teaches me about God. He teaches me the things of life. He's my hero. Guys, I got one hero. His name's Jesus. Woo! I come up here to baptize Hunter, but we're going to do this just a little bit different. 
We're going to do this just a little bit of effort. Pastor Marty, I want you to baptize both of us, brother, at the same time. baptize you now, you both, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. don't know this. This little boy was healed of cancer at two years old. Give God another praise. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. The waters are stirred. The waters are stirred. You got offense. You got bitterness. Might as well wash it off. It's being stirred. The waters are troubled. Get in. Who are you? Your heart's pounding, your hands are sweaty, your throat's about to close up. Who are you? Come on, come running. Come running. It's me, it's me. Come running. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There's two. There's a couple more. There's a couple more saying if he'll just if he'll just call one more time, I'll go. We're calling one more time. We're calling one more time for you. Take courage, it's okay. We'll wait for you. What better time than the now? What hindereth me from being baptized? Nothing. Come on. Dad, come on. Cross over tonight. Cross over into hope. Cross over into joy. Cross over into peace. Step on over. You step out, he'll allow you to step on over. Come on. Come on, there's leaders. There's leaders in this place. There's leaders here. It's time for you to get in. You're leading with a limp. Stop leading with a limp. It's time to get in. Throw the crutches down. Stop leading with a limp. Let's go. Wait no more. Come on. Come on. Come on. Take courage, my heart. Stay steadfast, my soul. He's in the waiting. He's been waiting for you. Launch out into the deep. Come on, let's worship. While we're waiting, let's worship. Let's worship. Let's worship. Get up on your feet. Raise your voice. Lift your hands. Take courage. Remind yourself. Stay steadfast, my soul. Because he's in the way. Yeah. 
even know if there's a way to check to see if anybody's still watching live, sp live stream, but I heard the Lord say, tell them to fill the tub up. Tell them to fill the tub up at home. Sweetheart, you're going to have to baptize your husband. Go fill the tub up. You may be watching my live stream. You're not missing out. We live in a day of technology where the Spirit of God, who's omnipresent, can be anywhere at the same time. Fill the tub up. It's time for both of you to get wet at home. Don't miss out. You don't have to miss out. Fill that tub up. My God, I feel that strong. Fill the tub up at home. Be a part. Be an extension of this. This is not just for this house. This is for your house. This is for your daddy. This is for your mama. This is for your young person. Fill the tub up for them. Woo! Share the video if you have to. Fill the tub up at home. Make your home a sanctuary. Throw on some worship if you have to set the atmosphere. Sing if you have to. Take courage. He'll show up in that bathroom. He'll show up in your home. He'll invade your space. Fill the tub up. What's your name? Amy. Amy. Are you here? I've been on a journey for about two years, and the Lord set me free. I um, had multiple personalities, had over 500 different personalities, suffered from depression, anxiety, eating disorders, self-harm, and God has completely set me free. Yeah. And I am a new creation. Mm. Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, all the way. The wait's over. The wait's over for you. Tell everyone your name. If they don't know, they, they should know, but tell them. <laughs> I'm Sylvia Carroll. And we were down here worshiping. All I could hear was the Lord was saying, out of my belly flows rivers of waters. And it's just, will not leave me alone. And I just told the Lord, I said, just let them flow because I want to be on the top of it. And when you started preaching about being on the top of the waves, it was such a confirmation to me what God said. And I am so ready to be on the top of those yes. waves and not underneath them. Woo! 
God. The wait is over because of your profession of faith and your desire and your hunger. The rivers are coming. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He found you. He found you. Tell her. He said, tell her, I found you. I found you. I found you. The hide is over. The weight is over. I found you, says the Lord. I found you. You're mine. With open arms, I gladly receive you. My daughter, because of your profession of faith and your desire and your hunger to be filled to overflowing, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Tell everyone your name. My name is Cheryl. Cheryl, why are you in this white I'm in here because I was laying on the floor a minute ago, and the Lord told me later that I would not get joy unless I was baptized. You step out, joy steps in. I've been fighting Satan for five months. <laughs> and having to cast him out of my household. <laughs> this baptism is going to symbolize no more depression and no more fights with the enemy. And the Lord is going to come over my house and it's going to be peace and joy. Lord. Thank you, Lord. You heard her. Father, you heard her. She's laying down her sword tonight. The battle is not mine. The battle belongs to the Lord. 
not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Father, we baptize her now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. water tonight. You're on our worship team here. You worship every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. What are you doing in this water? What's God doing? I sang about there be a new wine and a new fire. And I want that fire and that wine that I sing about. And I want to let go of sadness. Overwhelm our Lord in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. still moving he's still moving this is your last call take an opportunity right here to start fresh to make things new in the Lord right now right now don't wait till tomorrow don't wait till next week if he's tugging on your heart follow it right now do not wait don't wait till you get home and say I wish I would have done it I wish I would have done this right now right now right now come on you I know that there's at least two more people out here right now I hear that right now there's at least two more people that you're feeling the unctioning of the Holy Spirit saying just go 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 right now do not miss the crest of this wave the crest of this wave is coming don't miss it don't miss it don't miss it steps I heard the Lord say I'm in the waiting but it's not in a time waiting he said tell her as she comes up and it gets her big toe in the water and then her ankle in the water and then her knee in the water and then her waist and until she's in here I began to meet her right there 
It's not just in here. It's when you took that step of faith. Because we don't want you to be dependent upon a pool. We want you to be dependent on the one who you took a step for. Tell her I'm in the waiting. She's just waiting right now. But when she gets in, I'm going to sweep her away in my current. I'm in the waiting. Waiting around, playing in the puddles. I'm in the waiting too. You don't have to play in the puddles anymore. You don't have to wait anymore. It's time to get in, says the Lord, and there's somebody else. It's time to take a step. He's in that waiting. He'll meet you right there in the waiting, just waiting around in the pool. Just dipping my toe. Is it, is it my time, Lord? Just wait in it for just a minute. He'll pull you. The waves will pull you in. Just wait in it for just a minute. He's in the waiting. Do y'all feel that out there? He's in the waiting. Come on, just kick your foot around a little bit. I dare you. If that might be you, if that could be you, just wave your foot around just a little bit. Wait in it just a minute. The Spirit of God will pull you. Just wait in it for just a moment. He's in the waiting. Ankle deep. Knee deep. Get in, says the Lord. Get in, says the Lord. Don't miss your moment. Don't miss your moment. My God, don't miss your moment. Ankle deep. Knee deep. He's in the waiting. said, watch what I can do. There's a crushing. taking your heart and he's squeezing it. Not to choke the life out of it, but to resuscitate it. He's squeezing it. It's been a long time since you felt that love. Let him squeeze. He's squeezing it to bring life back purpose back, bring, bring your dreams back, bring your hopes back. tender moment as we're waiting it's not that we don't know what to do he just wants to download a couple of things to us he's in the laugh he's in the joy, he's in the shout he's in the scream he's in the overwhelming weight that sits down on you but he's also in that still small voice, that moment 
when it's just you and him and you feel so much guilt and you feel so much shame and you just begin to hear that whisper and your heart just begins to just to swell up a little bit and he says I've never forgotten you I've not forgotten you I'm still here still here. Some of you just need to extend your right hand toward heaven and grab daddy's hand. Say, it's been a long time since I felt you, daddy. Can I just hold your hand? Can I just hold your hand for a moment? why you're in this water tonight. My cousin passed away. A lot of things have happened this year. Yes, I'm all in. All in. He's going to overwhelm you when you come out of that water. He's going to overwhelm you. But it's okay, it's Him. We baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. did you decide to come into these waters? Because I'm a fixer and I fix other people. And I don't never work on myself. And God said that I had to choose me for once. And I had to choose life or death and I'm choosing life. And I'm done. He said, once you get in that pool, when you walk out, you're going to have to change. You know that, right? So I said, well, I'll just, I'll just sit here for a minute then. And then he said, no. Get up there and get in that pool. It's time. That's what I did. It's time. It's time. So I'm ready to change. Old things have passed away. They're done. Done. It's gone, dead. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost.